In our last video, we talked about continuous growth. We say that one unit cell with a hundred percent growth rate, growing continuously, will become E units. We showed that E can be approximated by an infinite inverse factorial series. The more terms you use, the better the approximation. It's roughly 2.71828. In this video, the problem is turn around, because in real life you can never observe the growth rate directly. Instead, you observe the final outcome. For example, you might observe that one unit cell becomes two units in one unit time, or three units. In fact, could be anything. So we want to know the underlying continuous growth rate. We call that rate logarithm. Log two is the rate that can double the unit. Log three is the rate that can triple the unit. Log x is the rate for the unit to multiply x times. Some people use ln instead of log to mean its natural log. I'll just stick to log here. I'll explain the differences later. So log x is the continuous rate needed for one unit to become x units. In one unit time, but simply giving it a name doesn't tell you how to calculate it. Let's use log two as an example to see how to compute it. It means one unit becomes two units, so a net increase of one unit. But this extra unit doesn't come from the mother cell completely, because if you remember, its offsprings are constantly growing too. So the actual growth from the mother cell should be smaller than one. Now, how to calculate it? Let's consider the incremental growth by looking at equal growth size each step. For example, let's consider the next little period where the cell grows by ten percent. Let's assume this ten percent comes from the mother cell completely. So here we write down the contribution from the mother cell. It's an approximation, but since the interval is small, the error is small too. Then viewing this as a whole, going into the next period, where again it grows by ten percent. Now, of this ten percent growth, how much comes from the mother cell? One over one point one, right? Again, viewing this as a whole, one point two unit. Going to the next little while where another 10% growth happens, now the mother cell contributes one over 1.2. You can see a pattern here. Going to the next little while, it contributes one over 1.3, 1.4, so on, until one over 1.9, because we considered 10 growth steps, and we start with one over one. So to calculate log two. We can approximate it by summing them up. It's about 0.718771. Now let's make it more precise by considering a hundred growth steps. So each step we consider one percent increase and see how much comes from the mother cell. So we have the whole one percent for the next growth, one over 1.01 of it. One over 1.02 of it. One over 1.03 of it, all the way to one over 1.99, because we consider a hundred steps. Now summing them up, we get a more accurate answer: 0.695653. It's pretty similar to what you get using the calculator. So let's consider the general case log x. Where it grows by x minus one, you break down the total growth into n steps. Let's call it delta u. Then log x is defined to be this series, where you add up the weighted average contribution from the original unit. If you know calculus, you can see this can be represented by an integral formula when n is infinity. This is the definition of logarithm. But you can calculate it using this expansion. It might not be the best algorithm, 
but it gives you some rough ideas about what log is. In the future, we will see how to use this natural log to calculate log of any base.